Good morning, uh, this is Daybreak and time for a new Super Review. I'm Hussein Mohamed, our guest this morning. Uh, on my right, Gladys Bols Chalet. This is the Wasin Kishu woman representative. Thank you for making time for us this morning. And Senators Kimani Omatangi, Kiambu County, and uh, Moses Kajuang, Homo Bay County. Thank you all for making time for us uh, this morning. Senator Nandi County, Chirar Gay, will be joining us uh, shortly. Let's take a look very quickly at the headlines on the papers. Uh, this, the Nation, Daily Nation. Uh, say MPs corner Uhuru of a gender bill. Rebellion women lose again in parliament as male members live up to their chauvinism and defy their party leaders to scuttle uh, proposed law. It's the same headline in the um, standard talking about MPs defy Uhuru, Raila uh, on key bill, gender bill vote deferred despite intense lobbying by the president and opposition leaders. Uh, MPs yesterday failed to turn up in the National Assembly for the crucial vote. Right, and I'll start, uh, I'll start with, um, okay, Cherge is here first, that's why I'm, I'm stammering. Okay. Are you okay I'm now? Good, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for making time for us. I'll start with uh, Honorable Gladys Shalei this. Mm. Uh, I don't know what first your uh, reaction to this is, how you feel about mm. what happened yesterday first. Uh, it was a, a little disappointing, uh, but I think I must say we saw it coming. Um, I doubt that there was enough lobbying. I think, in fact, by the time uh, the bill was tabled before the House and during the public participation, there wasn't sufficient attempt to reach out to members and lobby them to support the bill. There wasn't uh, enough uh, convincing undertaken because I found that a lot of members still talked about it as if it's about women, when it is actually a right to equality, it's a human rights issue. Mm. Even that basic information was unknown to members. So they kept saying, we want to support our women, our women. But what they forget, it's not about the women. It is about, uh, it is a human rights issue. And so the lobbying wasn't enough. I think I'm happy that uh, it's been deferred to a further date. I'm hoping that we can now lobby members. Um, the I lobbying think was, in a, was not enough. I mean, who do you blame for that? From who? Uh, I mean, everyone, starting with the, our leader of majority. I don't think he took the time, even before he tabled it, to even engage with members to find out why was the, did the last one fall? Because if it failed the last time and you bring the exact same uh, bill, then you haven't addressed the concerns of the members. I also think that... Um, the parties, I, at least I know, I don't know if the other parties were called for a parliamentary group meeting. I know that Jubilee wasn't called for a parliamentary group meeting. Was not called for. Yes, mm -hmm. because usually when there's a very important item, you would expect that our party leader would then call everyone to a parliamentary group meeting and tell them that this is the position of the party. In other and instances, we just see them talk and people vote for. No, we, I mean, when things have been serious, during the VAT, we, were, we, were, we had a parliamentary group meeting in State House. This what didn't happen on this one. So, if you t so I don't see the commitment. And I kept saying, I think I said on this show, and unless a parliamentary group meeting is called and members told that this is the party position and convinced that they should uh, support this party position, then it's very difficult for it to sail. In the standard newspaper, I mean, that story, I, I don't remember which page it was, but I remember, yeah, mm. that was in page four. In the nation, the story is on page um, five. Uh, the, the, the photo there <laughs> with Raila Odinga, uh, Kalonzo Musioka in the house yesterday, and uh, Senator Moses Kajuang. I don't know what you make of this. She's, from what you're saying, majority leader did not do enough, isn't it? Yes, and neither did. I don't think that. I, Jubilee did not call a parliamentary group meeting. I think Kawapa, we can take a bit of the share of the blame. But there was, a, I mean, but even to get 212 members in the house, believe me, I've watched a lot of things happen in the House since I got my first time parliamentarian, but I've never seen so many people. I think 212 was a good showing. At some point, I thought that if we had just held off for a, adjourned for a few minutes, tried to lobby some of the members that were even within the presence of parliament and were in the lounge, we had convinced them to come in. Maybe we could have gotten the numbers. So, they, I mean, they did to be upgraded. I, but I must commend uh, uh, on the Right Honorable uh, Raila Odinga, and um, uh, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka. I think it was a good show of support. I think it's symbolic. I think it was good that they, they, they were it there. Didn't, it didn't amount to much. 
ultimately, despite them being there, I don't know what you make of it, Honorable uh, Kajem. Uh, thank you, sir, oh. and uh, good morning to our viewers. The, the photo that was just put up there was uh, taken after the vote was deferred. <laughs> and uh, we were just uh, <laughs> doing a post-mortem of the events uh, that had happened in the National Assembly. There was a sense of disappointment that the matter was not uh, concluded uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but there was also a little sense of hope because all is yeah. not lost. Mm -hmm. uh, the matter, the mover was not called upon to reply. So that means that the bill remains in the status of uh, second reading. And uh, when people come back uh, for the uh, next session, in the next session, uh, the bill can still progress in second reading, third reading. In okay. fact, the nice thing is that uh, when people come back, it does not have to start from scratch. It does not have to be reintroduced into the house. Okay. It will just proceed from second reading uh, onwards. So all is not lost. What then needs to happen is that we need to see the commitment of the political uh, godfathers. And the reason why Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Musioka were in parliament was to symbolically show their troops that they are in support, not just by words, but also by deeds. And so in the next session, there should be a greater lobbying, as, uh, as, as Gladys says, uh, so that all members come to the House. And even the speakers, if they are committed, they must make sure that when this matter is coming up for consideration and voting, no member of the National Assembly should be out there on foreign visits or uh, no committees <laughs> should be out of town. But that's, I think, that, that's that, within their rights, isn't that, it? That also, but it's within their rights, but yeah. it also takes away the numbers. Because you see 137 why? MPs were away. Question is, Honorable Some why, of them why could have traveled. Why must it get to that? Uh, why must it get to that? You are dealing I mean, with a two-third requirement. And a two-third requirement, you know, you, you must, if there is commitment, if there is commitment, no commitment, you can whip as a political party leadership, but also administratively within parliament, you could ensure that at that time, all other external engagements are put on hold to get the numbers. But there's no commitment, is there? Uh, well, I, I think there is not sufficient <laughs> commitment, you want, I mean, you, not you, from all the are players. those looking at this, uh, as, uh, this has been deferred to February, and you're among the ones looking at it positively, but there are those who are just going negative again and saying, let's be real. It's very simple. This thing has failed again. Whether it's February or not, it was supposed to happen yesterday. There was weeks of uh, lobbying and people knew this was going to happen and it didn't happen. So was that a failure? Uh, Senator Matangi. Uh, <clears throat> actually, the, the last time uh, we spoke about this, there are a few facts which we, I, I remember we spoke about that, that you can ignore, uh, which, which, which are truthful. One, uh, I don't think that the timing was right. And, and, and most of us have not, uh, are not being honest about that. You know, a few months ago, as I said, uh, the whole country engaged in, in, in a big debate about how the wage bill is burdensome to, 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 to the economy of this oh. country. And, 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 and the focus that time was, was on the legislature. And everybody was claiming that uh, we have a bloated, uh, you know, we have bloated numbers and we need to reduce. And everybody believed, actually, uh, Hussein, I'll tell you for a matter of fact, uh, first straight, we, we have to be, to be honest about it. What, what, what people on the ground are saying is completely different from what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day I got a call from a woman, a mother, in my own, in my own county, and she's asking me, uh, you're saying you're going to vote for that bill, and, and, and again, the wage bill is so high, are you giving us a choice between uh, telling us that you want to empower women and, and, and uh, choosing uh, to pay more to put food on our table? And, and, and that's not the right choice. You know, again, uh, the, the, the other point, uh, Hussein, is this. There's, this. there's this argument that has been made, and I think we need to rethink it, yeah. that uh, when the Constitution itself has numbers in it. For example, there will be 290 members of parliament, uh, there will be so many number of constituencies. The process, the methodology that we are using, for example, if you compare, uh, when, you, when, you, when you're talking about, um, for example, uh, take a case for, like for boards, where you have a provided number, uh, would you say that when you want to have those appointive uh, positions uh, meet that rule, are you going to create more positions in a board? Say that uh, this board now will not have uh, nine, it will have 13. And the argument that has been there is this. When, when this provision was made in the Constitution, 
was it uh, was it made for parliament to go and create more positions or for parliament to uh, legislate create a methodology all of us included such that we would end up attaining this uh, requirement probably by and i believe uh, through a process of more empowerment Hussein, i would want to ask ask a very uh, important question uh, think about when was chelagat mutai in parliament when was phoebe Asio in parliament when was Njiva mwendo in parliament and 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 then and then you would ask yourself how long is a process up to today uh, where why have we failed such that we would get to this point and this day in time would be saying that the way to uh, deal with this is to create uh, these uh, positions as nominated positions and i'll tell you if you look at uh, in my view if you look at countries that have succeeded in what you would call uh, attainment of that parity mm. uh, somehow cases like norway uh, a lot of other scandinavian countries have, have done that is through a committed empowerment process of women long term and and then you, you find that you get to attain it what, you know my 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 concern would be this that that, that we are looking for an for an instant coffee model <laughs> of, of of solution uh, we, okay. Without, without really addressing yeah. uh, what, what the key issues are. Bottom then, line, you're saying this is this should not happen. No, no. I mean, I'm I'm saying if if we are true, because uh, unfortunately, if you look at the behavior of most politicians, and that is the sometimes the nature of politicians, mm. they want to be the ones at that time who have who be said to have come and broken the ice and uh, gotten the bill voted for, and uh, we have attained this. But 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 at the end of the day, you ask yourself, and I believe that is what we are all saying here. Why did the bill not pass yesterday? It is because there was no commitment. People were speaking from one end of the mouth saying this, and the other end of the mouth they're saying something different. Actually, they were deceptive in the, in, in, in the impression they of... Because to, to support uh, Absolutely. Uh, I think the reason uh, the, it failed, of course I was among the few people who opposed this from the word go. Mm. And I think the reason it failed is... Well, Matangi uh, also seems to oppose it. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I, 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 I mean, he's going round about it. I, 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 would, I, would, I would have, you, you know, my, my point the, the is I subjected to reasoning. The, the, the reason it failed... <laughs> he's not? The, the, the reason it failed, and I suspect that is why party leaders did not call for a PG, is because it was unpopular by the people. And I agree with Senator Matangi that we were discussing this issue against the backdrop of the soaring wage bill and uh, the issue of referendum. These are some of the questions that Kenyans wanted, they were saying we have represented. Yet at the, at the beginning of this, uh, this time we were discussing about, about referendum and then later you are telling them we want to increase representation in parliament. And therefore I'm looking even to the future where we'll strike off this. Well, this, 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 this hasn't come up from the blue. This no, it has been there. That is why now when we discuss about referendum, these are some of the uh, parts of the constitution that we should strike out so that they should be... For example, let you, uh, cabinet as it is constituted today, it does not meet the gender parity. We still miss two in the, out of 24 cabinet ministers that we have. We should also be auditing the county governments, the arm of executive, the, the national government, the arm of ex What audit have they done to ensure that gender parity has been? And uh, the reason I did, uh, I did not agree with this is that you don't need to punish the voters for simply exercising their universal suffrage. Because you are telling the voters, because you have elected men, then you should be punished by being given somebody of not your choice, which defeats the essence of democracy. And then, um, but, of course, cautiously. <laughs> and then number two, uh, and finally on that part, the constitution did create uh, various classes or what we call minorities. We have the youth, we have people living with disability, we have women, we have the minorities. Mm. What happened to Wajomfu, in, for example, in Coast? What happened to Okieks and Gems? What happened to the young people? What happened to the people living with disability? And the, I think Hussein, the reason this thing is unpopular is because nomination process has been abused. That is why in Parliament today we have flower girls and page boys who their interest, because even if nominations was should be done, we should get somebody who is of high, unique, special skill they to participate. They should be a formula. To they, they that, be a formula. And that is why Kenyans are not supported. And interestingly, even my, in my county, I received some texts and women are against this thing. Okay, and I think Shalei would have something to say about yes. this last time. <laughs> okay, I think, first of all, this period that we have been given to re to uh, until February, when the bill comes back again to the House, will give us time to convince people like Senator Matangi and Senator uh, Cherargei. Because, one, I know that one of the biggest concerns I had from members 
is that they said, okay, we're going to allow nominations, but what is the method, what is the formula that's going to be used to nominate? I know that was a big issue among members. Mm. For those who agreed mm. and were supportive, that was their biggest uh, problem. And I know many times I said, let's just back it. We can amend the Political Parties Act to be able to develop a formula through that method. Number two, as long as members still think and, and we need to convince them out of that, and that's why this period is going to be important, so that I can let Senator Gerard Gay know that first of all, you swore to uphold the Constitution. Article th uh, 3, you are obligated to defend, protect the Constitution. The Constitution has entrenched the one-third principle. So when you took that Bible and swore to uphold the Constitution, you have no choice but ensure that the Constitution is is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 uh, is, uh, is implemented. Number two, if you look at Article 81 of the Constitution, each and every part of it has been implemented except the one-third principle. Every A, B, C, D, up to J, but except that one. So the question you ask yourself, how can is it that we say we want to implement the Constitution on one side and not implement the Constitution on the other side? I also believe strongly that the only reason that the bill was brought before the House was because of the pending court case. If you remember in 2015, mm -hmm. uh, we had the advisory opinion, mm -hmm. no sorry, uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. In 2015, they were permitted to have time, uh, they were given time until 2015. 2015, yeah. it took the court to give uh, 40 days to the Attorney General to ensure that the bill goes into Parliament or else that Parliament will be dissolved. So they quickly put not in the bill, yeah. which bill was not well thought through. It failed the first time. I don't think the concerns of members at that time, at the 11th Parliament, were addressed in the new draft. We should have redone the draft, addressing the concerns of members so that we can get on board more members. Even now, when the case came up for hearing, what was the argument of the government? The bill is before Parliament. Before Parliament. Right. And even right. now, so it was this right buying right. time, this buying time, yeah up to February also gives them reprieve the with the court. I mean, uh, so the so court, not, again, will give them a chance and will not dissolve parliament. Later, five years later, what, do you, what makes you think between now and February things will be different? I, it's five years well, and it's... I think I, I, what I believe is we should change the strategy. Convention. I think we should push for the court to... Uh, uh, I mean, for the chief justice to advise the president to dissolve parliament. That's the only way it's going to happen. To dissolve I don't, parliament? Yes. But I don't think it's going to happen any other way. I had that... Yes, that I have a constitutional a amendment bill that yes. looks much more better than the than dual bill have. at the and moment. Actually, that is another question I want to ask. Yes. I mean, we have not seen even, okay, it's not like it's their role as women to bring this, but we have Cape Wopper. And we've not seen these bills originating from you. We've not seen any amendments from you. Yet you come and yes, complain yes. that okay. you come and complain that these bills, the way they are, they were not strategically well okay, thought out. Okay, I think I think if you look at it, um, this particular bill, once it had come to the house, the the law is such that on the standing orders, you cannot make an amendment to a constitutional amendment bill on the floor of the house. You can't do that. So unfortunately, our hands were tied on that one. Um, if I I did to originate, that's yes, what I'm saying, yes. Yeah. But personally, I tabled a bill. I mean, I I transmitted a bill to the house in October, as soon as I came into office, in, 20, in uh, last year in October. Yeah. Yes, it does have a formula, which I'm grateful to Chair says the formula is better. But I also told myself I have an obligation to the women of Kenya and also to ensure that if, and I said, I'm going to back the government-sponsored bill, the, what is commonly known as the Dwale Bill. Why? Because I, I, I said to myself, it's better than nothing. At least it will be a step in the right direction. Okay. And I'm throwing my weight behind it, but I always told the women, my bill is a plan B. Should the Dwale bill pass, then mine automatically dies. Uh, but you, if you it know, doesn't, the, the, then the, we the still question, have another bill. The, the question that I, that I wanted, I wanted uh, to answer to us, because she's quoted quite a number of uh, articles in, mm. in the Constitution. Yes. You know, wh when the Constitution uh, clearly says that Parliament will enact legislation, to ensure that that uh, parity is attained, does, pari does, does that proposition of, of the constitution then intend or direct that, that parliament then will, create, will, will, will enact that legislation by directing nominations or, or, or by acting in such a way that it will cause nominations? Or is, or is it envisaging 
that there is other methods and methodology that can be used to attain that. And, I think, that, and I think that's why we are losing it. Because, yeah, because wh when we all narrow it down that there are positions that are going to be created we'll through be in nomination parliament. in yes. parliament, yes. That, that's why we lose okay, it. But, but because, it, yeah. because, uh, because more, as, as you had earlier started, you see, if we, if we take, expand uh, the, 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 the barriers, and then we'll be saying, look at the Political Parties Act, look at uh, the process of nomination, mm -hmm. look at uh, what uh, political parties are supposed to do themselves in yeah. terms of uh, empowering women and I want to remind you remember during those days of Kanu Nominations have not started now. Uh, mm, it's yes. only that they were being done uh, th that time yes. differently. Yes. Yeah. I mean, more, more used to give these positions to, 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 to those women who were in parliament that time, yes. you know, what you would call in quotes nomination. But, but it has not cured the, yes. the, the, that problem up to today. So we should be looking at a process. And I, I, I stand with this fact that unless we are determined to come up with a process that will empower women so that they can be able to compete yeah. uh, on a level playing, playing field in, in uh, elections. Then, then uh, we will never get even it's, it's, that sunset clause included there. It's, it's, uh, we, it's, it's, it's easy to lose it. this argument. Oh. I come from a county that has elected some very strong women to parliament. Mm. Homer Bay County has Nilio Diambo, Dr. Ivo Barra, Lillian Gogo, elected directly through mm -hmm. universal suffrage, including uh, Gladys Wanga, Gladys who, who represents special interest. So you would, you would say that Homer Bay County has already attained that. Yes. But this is a community and a culture that allows women to compete. People like Phoebe Asio, Bito Kikiamayo, who was a chairman of Kanu, because Canada. culturally, mm -hmm. we have allowed women to get an education. We have allowed women yes. to compete against men. Yes. We have allowed women oh, to pursue yes. opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not everywhere in Kenya. Yes. We so, must be alive to that. Right. That the situation <laughs> in Homabe, the situation that might be obtaining in Kiambu or Wasingishu, does not obtain in Marsabit, Samburu, and many other parts of this country. Mm. So it's easy for us to argue that women should compete with men. But the reality is we have not created a level playing field across this entire Republic of Kenya. Now, and that is the reason why some of these provisions are coming in. This is part of the building blocks. This is not the ultimate solution. The ultimate solution will be that day when we as Kenyans, we don't see women as being different. When Gladys sits on a table like this, we are not seeing her as a woman. We are seeing her as one of us. And we are not giving her a special opportunity to speak because she's a woman. We are giving her an opportunity to speak because she deserves to be here. So We've it's about some affirmative action? No, 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 I'm saying that these, uh, these numbers in parliament yes. is part of the building block, but it is not the ultimate solution. Hussein, we have come through some very embarrassing situations. Uh, le le let me tell you, there's a time we went to uh, Sweden and we found a prison warder who was a female. And the Kenyan uh, female delegation was very excited congratulating her, that we are so <laughs> proud that you're a prison and warder and you're a woman. She and she, she was very disappointed because she <laughs> says that I'm here not because I'm a, woman, I'm a woman, but I'm here because I'm qualified. That is the ultimate. But these are the building blocks that will get us there. Okay. And that is the reason why I support this. It is not an elegant solution, but we must address ourselves to it because the situation is not fair. It is not balanced across this country. I remember you talking about uh, the timing and the wage bill. I'll just read uh, the uh, story on uh, uh, the Daily Nation, a paragraph here that says it also emerged that majority of the MPs were reluctant to pass the bill before President Kenyatta sends to the Parliamentary Service Bill 2018, which seeks to enhance their packs, including house allowance, car loans, enhanced insurance cover, and a special kit in each of the 290 constituencies for monitoring and evaluation of national government's projects. I mean, it's not about the wage bill, is it? I think it is about the wage bill because... Uh, I mean, if, I you, if you want to do this, if MPs want this to happen, I mean, you cannot say you don't want the, uh, this uh, bill to pass and f this to be implemented because of the wage bill. No, no you know, Hussein, but, uh, there, is, there, there is no... The, in fact, this is just uh, perception. Because if we had a parliamentary group meeting as Jubilee or as ODM and this issue had merged, it could have been a reason. But I think the reason uh, it did not, this one, the gender parity argued is because the, the president and uh, other party leaders realized that this was not a popular uh, initiative by Kenyans because now it will be like confusing Kenyans. The other day you are talking about wage bill, this day you are talking <laughs> about referendum. And I think I want to agree with Senator yeah. Moses Kajwang. Before, before the famous handshake, mm -hmm. the ODM or NASA used to pursue something called electoral justice. 
and electoral justice was to create a level playing ground for the for, for the contest and i agree that w what we should be concentrating as a country is to create a level playing ground remember even before affirmative action where Gladys Pochole comes in Wazengisha and where I come by that time in 2007 we had elected sev seven women why is it that when you go to Rift Valley, Nyanza, but when you go to Northeastern and other areas, they don't elect women? So it is about the change of culture. It is not about the law. It is like you're putting the gun to, 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 to Kenyans that you must elect women because but they that is are. Why this is just affirmative action for a while. But, but of course, these are affirmative but action, but we should look at the long term. We should empower women more so that they can competitive. Because I was in a forum where women were saying, I think, get. They were saying m men have more muscle and more money. That is why they can win these seats. So I think we should have a long-term agenda to empower women, say that they can come to the field and uh, competitively agree and, and vie for those positions so that they can. But you know, you, you have also to change, as a, and I've seen this perception from women themselves. They should also believe in themselves that, uh, I, I'm, I know they are loyal voters. They always, they are the majority who vote. But the big question is why do they not vote for one of their own? It means they need, there is a, 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 a culture within themselves that they need to, what we call acceptance. They need to accept that, but that women can I mean, be elected and they can be in position. I mean, there are many reasons why that could happen. It cannot be, you cannot say yeah. as But, a, but as you know, interestingly, culture, okay. Kewapa, Kewapa, We also know Kenyan politics is about money. Of course, that is what they were. You're, you're, you're confirming, it is confirming that women are not as, as And you know, as Kewapa, the other day, and I, I, I'm glad he says that uh, the, the, the issue they do, but Kewapa, all several meetings of dinner, breakfast, lobbying. but they did not, yeah, lobbying. But in fact, I had some female legislators saying that we, they should have a pillow talk with their colleagues <laughs> to, 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 to lobby for this position. So I don't know what happened because the last time I checked, the Kawapa was trying to marshal the numbers. Right, yeah, and, and actually that's in the standard. Somebody, the story here says other women MPs who supported the decision were, sorry, um, there's somewhere they say women MPs were also not happy with how uh, Kawapa did this. They don't think yes, Kawapa can see, yeah. Uh, lobbied yeah. enough. Yeah, it's here actually. Yes, it is Kawapa has been mute, yes. absent, yes. and clueless as far as this. This is a, this is a female MP. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, they didn't I, want I to be. I thought they did a dinner, a dinner dance a day too. Yeah, yeah they, that is a day too. But now yeah. they are saying <laughs> it, it this was is a female MP. They didn't want to be quoted. But, uh, she's saying she doesn't think Kawapa uh, did enough. And as you respond, and for all of you, I just respond. I mean, the standard here is quoting President Kenyatta. Uh, the Constitution Amendment Bill 2018 is meant to help the country, country realize the right to equality and freedom for discrimination for women as stipulated in the Constitution. Opposition Leader Ariel Odinga saying, I ask the MPs, please let us pass this bill so that our laws are in conformity with the requirements of our Constitution. Do you think these two gentlemen, um, if they really wanted this bill to pass, it would have passed? Alas, yes. Alas, yes. Yeah. yes, I believe so. Uh, but before even I, may, I talk about that, I think what Senator Matangia said is that there are other methodologies. I agree with him that there are other methodologies for ensuring that we achieve the one-third principle. And that's why I said we needed to have relooked at the bill before it came back to the House in the same form that it was. Mm -hmm. We could probably have interrogated and uh, found a methodology that is acceptable to most members. That didn't happen. But... Even if it didn't happen, if you believe in the principle of the right to equality, then at least you can support it. And then we will slowly begin to cure it. The fact that there was success stories in the past of Phoebe CEO, Chela Gatmutai, mm. uh, you know, um, and, and uh, Julia Ojambo and so on, those are isolated success stories. It isn't the norm across the country. What we should have been saying is that these women did manage to, to, to run. What is it that they did or what was it that was different in their areas? And try and replicate it so that we can get more women. And remember, affirmative action is not a permanent solution. It's not perpetual. It is only for a period and uh, so that during that time, we begin to find long-term solutions. So you can't say we'll sit and, and watch, wait, wait for yeah. the long-term solution. We do a stopgap measure immediately and then during that period, be able to have more. But, that stop, but does that stopgap measure have to be parliament, nominating more MPs? It's a because constitutional requirement. It's a constitutional requirement. Must it be nominating more MPs? No, yeah. no, so that's, remember, what he, that's what yeah. he was, I mean, he was yeah. asking. We're not right? talking, yes, but you see, 
look at it. It's a, the law, the constitution doesn't talk only about within parliament. It yes. also talks about even in appointive positions, whether it's the state corporations, the chairpersons, the directors, and the, the cabinet, which are all unconstitutional as we speak. Mm. So it is across the board. But we are saying, let's start somewhere. And remember, if we had more women in parliament, more women in decision-making uh, positions, like the state corporations and so on, what will happen is they'll weigh in on mm. some of the decisions, which will then allow uh, uh, the, the one-third principle to trickle all the way down. And remember, we have put it as requirements in other places. The, your CDF board has to have uh, a person with disability, a man, a woman, uh, youth, etc. Okay. So we've already placed it in many other parts of our society. I think the places that are missing, like I said, we've implemented everything except in parliament, in appointed positions, within the government so, uh, and 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 so it will it is the beginning of it and this topic of affirmative action has been studied the world over yeah. and kenya has actually kenya has actually been at the forefront kenya was one of the first countries to sign the international convention on civil and political rights long yeah, before yeah, 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 they okay, even much, put much it in more. their constitution oh. so so what we are asking is allow in fact when you look at the the current uh, law on the 47 it's perpetual it has no time frame, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. But all the others have a watershed period. Yeah, 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 just, just, uh, you know, the, the, the point I, I was making when I when I referred to those uh, pioneering women mm -hmm. was, um, if if you if if you look back now uh, mm -hmm. at, at at the road that yes. you have travelled as a country from the first time when they set foot in parliament, yes. the, the the road the, or, the, or the or the facilitation that was put in place then by Kanu and more maybe to have them in those positions and where we are now. Would, would you say that we have made progress towards uplifting women? Yeah. And, 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 then, and then the question uh, would be this Hussein, that if then we want to be where we are, is that solution, as I have said, uh, then having this immediate instantaneous solution of, of, of uh, telling parliament you have to nominate the number and have, have that. And I will say this. Actually, that clause that you have we had put in there in in the current proposal, that there will be a sunset clause whereby within mm. 20 years mm. uh, that uh, it's going to be phased out. It will revert back to what where we are right now, Hussein. I can say that with certainty. You can have it now. You can have those nominations after 20 years. Come that sunset day, we will get back to where we are today. Because you have not created the, 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 the necessary, uh, you know, uh, empowerment uh, within, she's within that can, we can we can do and, that and, uh, in terms of long term. It can be handled later. That's, you, what, that's what she's you, saying. You, you, you know, and there, and there are mechanisms for that. First, she's talking about the stop gap mission. I mean, you, what you're talking about will not bear fruits now. But, 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 uh, but, but uh, Hussein, that, that's why we are saying, look at back where we are. We had women who are there. You know, so why, why did we fail f in the first place to attain it? It's because okay. we failed to do, to do the right things. Right. You know, if, if today we said political parties during your nomination process, this is how you have to do it. I mean, and, and this is how you have to place your women. If we said that when women are going to go to elections, because we know what they do not have, especially facilitation, like you said, men have got more resources, that this is how you resource women when they are going to compete. Okay. You'd, you'd be starting to create... The, the, yes. the, the, Thank the, you, the, Senator the, 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 Matangi. But then, yeah. let's put it this way. Yes, I agree. The re one of the reasons why women don't get elected is because the women don't control the big political parties. The, there is going to be work towards moving to ensure that women participate more in their political parties. Because when they have political party leadership, it, it becomes easier for political parties to have more women nominated. Also, in other countries like France, the political parties are actually penalized if they don't nominate enough women on their tickets. And they are, they, they are denied the, what the political parties fund that's available. Others even pay fines if they don't put in many. So there is many methodologies that can be done. But we are saying is, let's have the women in parliament. And then during that period, the number of women that are coming to parliament, encourage them, put in programs to encourage them to okay. participate more in the political parties. Okay. That very, way, so, and, and that's yeah. why you, ca you can't do them in isolation. It's doing all that. At the same time, you'll be trying to change the cultural perception. You'll try and ensure that uh, p politics is not all about money, because we know that not mo the, the money is not in women's hands, in majority. So that the fact that you have a few women who can do that doesn't mean that that is actually the norm. So yes, 
it is we are talking we are saying the same thing except that i'm saying let's have this inject more women immediately into parliament and, the, and positions of leadership do you, do you and then immediately that? start the programs to ensure that come the 20 years if we work right. hard during the, that time we wouldn't need affirmative action we have to look anymore. at other issues in 